The instant emotion I felt when I heard the news this morning that colleagues were leaving Labour was deep sadness. I've devoted my life to this party and I'm proud to serve it and I'm hugely disappointed about what has happened. This is a sad day for all of us. I think our colleagues have come to a premature conclusion. But this is a moment for regret and reflection, not for a mood of anger or a tone of triumph. There are those who are already celebrating the departure of colleagues with whom they disagree. The tragedy of the hard left is that they could be too easily tempted into the language of heresy and treachery. Betrayal narratives and shouting insults at the departed might make some feel better briefly, but it does nothing to address the reasons that good colleagues might want to leave. I want to say something in particular about Luciana Berger. In my time in politics, I've witnessed many changes, but perhaps the most profound of recent times has been the growth of identity politics. And I'm sad to say that a virulent form of identity politics has seized the Labour Party, which today took its first casualty. And I'd like to place on record my complete respect for Luciana and my understanding of the decision to which she has been driven. They say anti-Semitism is a light sleeper. This is certainly a wake-up call for the Labour Party. We were slow to acknowledge we had a problem and even slower to deal with it. Even a single incident of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party shames us. It shames us all. Now we've lost Luciana, one of our most dedicated and courageous MPs. If someone like her no longer believes there's a role for her in the Labour Party, then many other colleagues I know will be asking themselves how they can stay. That's why time is short for us to confront the scale of the problem and meet the consequences, to keep others from leaving. The identity of this party must be tolerant, multicultural, generous and welcoming. To put it mildly, we need to be kinder and gentler. I love this party, but sometimes I no longer recognise it. And that's why I do not regard those who've resigned today as traitors. I fear they've left at a critical moment for the country when all our attention should be on solving the Brexit crisis. So I regard them as people who've drawn the wrong conclusion to a serious question. The historic task of the Labour Party is to speak for those citizens who lack a voice, to offer them a stake in the future of the nation. Last month in a speech to the Fabian Society, I said that we needed to develop a programme that will deliver both within and beyond our traditional labour base. I said that I feared that if we did not do that, then someone else will. I confess I feared this day would come, and I fear now that unless we change, we may see more days like this. The departure of our colleague poses a test for our party. Do we respond with simple condemnation or do we try and reach out beyond our comfort zone and prevent others from following? We know in our hearts we've been too slow to respond to the shaming scourge of anti-Semitism in our ranks. Throughout our history, this party has been patriotic and internationalist at the same time. But is that a good description of what we're perceived as today? We face a government with no majority, no clarity and no leadership badly failing on the issue of a generation, Brexit, yet we're losing members and now losing MPs. This country faces some troubling questions and we've yet to convince the nation that we have the answers. Social democratic and democratic socialist traditions, which has always been the mainstream of Labour's political thought, is where we can find the answers to the current crisis. This is why I'm in the coming weeks and months I'll be working with Labour MPs to develop policies within that tradition to address the challenges of the future. I believe the much needed modernisation of this nation must come from there. And that is why the front bench once again needs to reflect the balance of opinion in the Parliamentary Labour Party. We need to broaden out so that all the members of our broad church feel welcome in our congregation. It is only if we open out this party can we fulfil our purpose? Labour was formed to give voice to the ordinary people of this nation. It can do so again, but only if it stays together. And it can only stay together if it stands for the whole country. This noble aim is what brought us all into politics. 
I believe in it every bit as much as I did on the day I first joined the Labour Party on my 15th birthday in 1982. But I say this candidly, that my fear is if we don't do it, someone else will.